Texas teenager Maya Tremillo filed a police report in March of 2022 after she was allegedly threatened by Savannah Walker, her schoolmate at Clifton High School. Tremillo and her mother were apparently told by law enforcers that there wasn't much they could do as there was no evidence of Walker's threats. According to the Clifton Police Chief, Chris Blanton, the dispute had something to do with a boy. On April the 18th, Tremillo was asked by her best friend, Alia Vestal, to meet up at a local park and return some borrowed shoes. When she made it to the location that evening, she saw Vestal's car and approached it. Unbeknownst to her, Walker was also in the vehicle. The latter attacked Tremillo, leaving her with several cuts to the face and a sprained ankle. Footage of the incident was posted online via Snapchat by one of the suspects. Tremillo was taken to a local hospital where doctors made the recommendation that she finish her senior year at home. Vestal and Walker were both arrested and charged with aggravated assault. According to Chief Blanton, it was discovered during the investigation that the attack on Tremillo had been meant as retaliation for the police report she filed, which caused the crime to be classified as a first-degree felony. Another teen who'd filmed the attack was also charged but not detained. The police chief added that even if only one of the suspects had carried out the assault itself, the other two were still present and had encouraged the attacker to continue. For that reason, all three were charged with the same offense. Walker and Vessel were released from Bosque County Jail on bond amounts that weren't publicly disclosed. Number 21. Alejandro Vea and Karim Espinosa. On October the 25th of 2019, a Texas duo from Laredo streamed their attempt to escape law enforcement who were on their tail as part of an investigation into a human smuggling operation. According to the police, the pursuit began after officers tried to stop a white Mercedes SUV for a traffic violation on Highway 83 in San Ignacio. The SUV, which was being driven by 22-year-old Alejandro Vea, didn't stop, instead continuing north. Vea's partner, 19-year-old Karim Espinosa, was on Facebook Live posing with the alleged illegal immigrants as they were being chased. In the stream, Vea was heard saying that immigration was onto him because he had 10 guys with him. Towards the end of the video stream, the suspects veered off the highway before fleeing on foot. Espinosa hid under a tree as police car sirens could be heard in the background of the video. She continued running away until the stream ended. Vea, Espinosa, and three other passengers suspected of entering the country illegally were eventually tracked down by U.S. Border Patrol agents. The pair were arrested and charged with unlawful transport of persons for pecuniary benefit and evaded arrest. Vea was additionally charged with reckless driving. They both face up to 10 years in federal prison for their crimes. Number 20. Logan Brooke Larimore and Farron Marie Lane on July the 5th of 2017, police officers were shown a Snapchat video that showed two girls trespassing at Myrtle Waves Water Park in South Carolina. The pair were in the water park located at 3000 Mr. Joe White Avenue in Myrtle Beach at around 4 a.m. three days earlier. They were seen eating ice cups they hadn't paid for, which a police report valued at a total of $8. At one point in the clip, one of the trespassers said, that they went down all the slides and admitted that they'd gained access to the park by jumping the fence. Officers used the Snapchat accounts to identify Logan Brooke Larimore and Farron Marie Lane through Department of Motor Vehicle Records. The 18-year-old suspects were arrested on July the 6th. They were both booked into jail on charges of third-degree burglary. Number 19. Braden Gaza Police officers raided a high schooler's home in the town of Scapoose, Oregon, on January the 6th of 2017. They reportedly seized three and a half ounces of cannabis as well as scales, prescription pills, and other controlled substances. While the suspect, Braden Gaza, was at school, police served a search warrant at his home in the 31,000 block of Sex Road. According to a press release from the local police department, Investigators gathered information about the 18-year-old's drug sales, which he allegedly facilitated over Snapchat. They also discovered pictures of the suspect flaunting wads of cash on Instagram. Gaza was arrested and charged with one count of unlawful delivery of marijuana and unlawful possession of it. He was booked into the Columbia County Jail. 35-year-old Adrian Barrera Macinas, a man who reportedly lived at the same residence, was also arrested on drug charges. Number 18. Miranda Raider 
In the city of Bryan, Texas, a policeman was responding to a disturbance call when an SUV crashed into the back of his patrol car on October the 26th of 2016. Officer John Startell had gone to East Via Maria Road at around 8.40 p.m. but wasn't in his vehicle at the time of the collision. He heard the sound of a vehicle braking hard moments before the crash. Startell approached the Acura SUV and discovered that a 19-year-old female with an unclassed brassiere was in the driver's seat. Miranda Rader, an engineering freshman from Texas A&M University, told the officer that she'd been trying to send a Snapchat photo to her boyfriend prior to the accident. She admitted to drinking wine at a friend's house earlier in the evening and said she was on her way back to her dorm. According to the resulting police report, there was an opened bottle of wine in the console of the young woman's car. Startel conducted several field sobriety tests, each of which Raider failed. She was then arrested and charged with driving under the influence and possessing alcohol as a minor. The next day, she posted her $2,000 bail and was released, pending the continuation of her cases legal proceedings. Number 17. Jacob Gunderson In May of 2020, the beating of 19-year-old Jacob Gunderson, which was captured on video and posted to Snapchat, resulted in the arrest of four people in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Local law enforcement investigated the matter after receiving a tip about the social media video. According to police, the victim had allegedly stolen vape equipment. He was attacked by 18-year-old Chase Passon and was unconscious with swollen, bloody lips when he was later taken to the hospital. When officers contacted Passon, he admitted to abandoning Gunderson after the vicious beating. He added that the victim had apparently been under the influence of Xanax. Passon was arrested and charged with battery, disorderly conduct, felony bail jumping, and possession of MDMA. Additionally, two 18-year-old girls who'd been involved in the incident, named as Ruby Jimenez Navarez and Alexis Trenque, both faced a count of battery. They were scheduled for their initial court appearances in August of 2020. Subsequently, an online petition identified a juvenile, Hannah Buchholz, as having been responsible for recording the incident and uploading it online. She was consequently facing battery charges in the juvenile court system. On May the 22nd of 2020, a $2,500 signature bond was signed by Passon. Six months later, he was sentenced to probation and 240 hours of community service. The other charges against him were dismissed. Number 16. Matthew Rondeau Professional model Matthew Rondeau was arrested in February of 2022 for felony domestic violence. A day prior to his arrest on the 23rd, the 28-year-old reportedly got into a fight with his girlfriend, Shana Mokla, at their Los Angeles home. He subsequently left and later made accusations during an Instagram Live that Mokla, an actress, had cheated on him, profanely insulting her as he did so. Rondo also allegedly directed a racial slur at someone who commented on his stream. The next day, he returned to their home where the fight reportedly continued. Law enforcement were called to the scene and saw visible marks on the body of 46-year-old Mokla. Rondo was then arrested at around 7.40 a.m. according to local authorities. A few hours later, he posted about the alleged altercation and referred to it as one of the most heartbreaking days of his life. During a pretrial hearing in July of 2022, he pleaded not guilty to one count of domestic violence, one count of vandalism, and one count of battery. On October the 18th of that same year, his lawyer confirmed that the charges had been dismissed. Mokla told TMZ that she wasn't pressing charges and that she was given 100% of her support to Rondo. She added that they both learned from the experience and were moving forward in a positive and peaceful direction. Number 15. Rodarius Rara Jai Kwan Thomas On the night of January the 22nd of 2023, Rodarius Rara Jai Kwan Thomas got into an argument with his teenage girlfriend in a dormitory at the University of Georgia. Their row became so loud that a university employee eventually called the cops shortly before midnight. When officers arrived at the McWater Hall dorm room, they interviewed 20-year-old Thomas and his girlfriend, Addison Alfred. The latter told law enforcement that the fight had started after she followed another man on Instagram. According to Alfred, she wanted to leave the dorm when her boyfriend subsequently became upset. However, as she tried to leave, 
Thomas blocked the exit and told her she couldn't go. When she said she wanted to call her mother, the situation escalated and the young man took her phone and Apple Watch. Alfred claimed that he then grabbed her right arm and pushed her down on the bed twice. According to the officers, the young woman's injuries were consistent with her testimony. At around 3 a.m., Thomas was arrested and charged with battery, family violence, and false imprisonment. He was consequently booked into the athens Clark County Jail. As a football player for the University of Georgia Bulldogs, he faced a suspension from competition because of the felony charge. The university's athletic association released a statement saying that the incident was disappointing and wasn't reflective of the high standards they had for student athletes on and off the field. Number 14. San Antonio Teens A man at a gas station in San Antonio, Texas, was robbed at gunpoint by four teens on March the 14th of 2023. The victim reportedly gave up his shoes, gold necklaces, earrings, and $40 in cash. After the suspects demanded he hand over everything in his possession, the man's vehicle was then searched by the robbers, but he managed to get behind the wheel at some point and drive off. The suspects pursued him in their own vehicle and opened fire during the ensuing chase. Upon reaching the intersection of Farm to Market Road 78 and Woodlake Parkway, the suspects Hyundai Veloster collided with multiple other vehicles on the roadway, including an 18-wheeler truck before they fled the scene on foot. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, the victim kept driving but eventually went back to the scene and reported the incident to the police. Three days later, on March the 17th, three of the suspects were arrested. 19-year-old Serenity Banda was charged with evading arrest with a vehicle. Sophia Denise Price, aged 17, was charged with aggravated robbery, and an unnamed 16-year-old was charged with aggravated robbery and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The fourth suspect, 18-year-old Jonathan René Esquivel, remained on the run until he was apprehended later in the evening. Number 13. Jeannie Exum Shortly after 6 p.m. on October the 18th of 2021, a New Yorker dialed 911 and reported that he'd been stabbed by his girlfriend during an argument. When authorities arrived at the caller's apartment, located on 10th Avenue in Manhattan, they found 30-year-old Francis Amour bleeding from his back and arm. Emergency medical services also responded and transported him to Bellevue Hospital. His girlfriend, 22-year-old Jeannie Exum, was arrested on a second-degree assault charge. Following her arraignment, the social media star was released without bail. As she walked out of the courthouse, she told a New York Post reporter to subscribe to her OnlyFans. According to her public defender, Amour didn't want the case to move forward. The judge nevertheless ordered Exum to stay away from the man, according to the New York Post. Number 12. Kevin Gaines Jr. A carjacking suspect from Florida aided law enforcement in his own arrest after streaming live on Instagram. 20-year-old Kevin Gaines Jr. had been wanted on several charges, including grand theft auto, driving without a valid license, and fleeing law enforcement. A deputy saw his vehicle outside a home on Beresford Avenue in Deland on December the 26th of 2019, and law enforcement subsequently surrounded the house. Officers confirmed they were at the right address when a deputy shone a light into the window, and the light appeared in the background of Gaines's live stream. Upon entering the residence, deputies were told by other occupants that the man they were looking for wasn't there. But Gaines eventually surrendered and was arrested without further incident. Three firearms were recovered from the house and another one was found inside a vehicle in the driveway. In addition to the previous charges against him, a count of possession of a firearm by a delinquent was added. Number 11. Victoria Waldrip On February the 24th of 2018, a teenage Instagram star continued to trespass at a mall in North Carolina after authorities gave her multiple chances to leave. Two Greensboro officers were detaining 17-year-old Victoria Waldrip when she allegedly kicked one of them. A man who was there with Waldrip subsequently became disorderly as well, which triggered a domino effect of sorts as various mall goers started screaming and running around the Four Seasons Town Centre Mall. According to the police, someone began shouting, SHOTS FIRED, which only worsened the prevailing sense of panic. 
Several calls about an active shooter were received by emergency dispatchers, but law enforcers at the scene confirmed that the reports weren't true. The only person taken into custody after the ordeal was Waldrip, while the fair-skinned teen claimed to be black. She was officially described as white in police records. According to the local police department, she was charged with trespassing, resisting arrest, and assault on a law enforcement officer. She was released the following day, after which she claimed that the police had been racist toward her in a video she posted with the Black Lives Matter hashtag. Number 10. Jacob Christopher Baez and Jared Christian Baez A birthday tab of almost $18,000 at Dirks Bentley's Whiskey Row in Nashville, Tennessee, led to a pair of twin Instagram influencers getting arrested. Jacob Christopher Baez and Jared Christian Baez, both aged 24, invited their online followers to attend their birthday party celebration at the popular Gastro Pub. They posted the invitation online and indicated the reservation was slated for 10.30 p.m. on April the 3rd of 2021. During the four-hour period they partied in the club with their guests, the twins accumulated a bill of $17,874.74. At around 3.30 the following morning, officers were called to the scene. According to the police, the Baez twins appeared very intoxicated and had no immediate way to pay the exorbitant bill. The brothers were consequently arrested before each posted a $5,000 bond a few hours later. They were charged with felony theft of services and were scheduled to appear in court two months later. They told Scoop Nashville that what they'd done was going to make them legends and would help them get verified on Instagram. They also claimed that the party had been sponsored by Kingdom Capital Elites, but no company by that name was registered with the state or the IRS. An Instagram account with the name Kingdom Capital Elites was reportedly created by the Baez brothers and had amassed roughly 2,000 followers. Number 9. Christopher Ricardo Gonzalez An 18-year-old fugitive classified as one of Texas's most wanted criminals gave his location away to authorities after showing his gun collection in an Instagram Live video. Christopher Ricardo Gonzalez, a gang member with a record of violent robberies, home invasions and allegedly murder, posted the incriminating video in September of 2017. Dallas detectives used the live stream to determine Gonzalez's GPS coordinates, which revealed his location to be Los Angeles, California. The Los Angeles Police Department's fugitive team was dispatched to the home in Woodland Hills after the information was forwarded by Dallas police. When officers arrived, Gonzalez attempted to escape by speeding off in a Chevrolet SUV. He ended up crashing into a pole in the 4800 block of Serrania Avenue before fleeing on foot. He was ultimately caught with the help of a police dog and arrested at around 2 a.m. on September the 19th. Number 8. Michael Allen Nomo Police arrested Michael Allen Nomo on April the 22nd of 2020 after 80 shots were allegedly fired at his flat in Kent, England. The Nigerian native, who was in his early 30s at the time, was streaming live on his Instagram account, Flexin Mike, when he fired blanks into the air from the balcony of Marina Tower. As he unloaded the rounds, Alonoma was wearing headphones and rapping along to a Tupac song. Armed officers were deployed to the home on Dock Head Road in Chatham. After neighbors called to report shots fired, the gunman was apprehended in two Eagle pistols as well as a camp assault rifle, all suspected of being imitation firearms, were seized. Five shell casings were found in his bedroom and 75 on the balcony. Alonoma told law enforcement that he'd been diagnosed with schizophrenia in Nigeria before he moved to the UK back in 2013. During a psychiatric examination, the man at one point claimed to be Tupac's reincarnation. In January of 2022, he pleaded guilty to three counts of firearm possession with intent to cause fear of violence. During the resulting legal proceedings, three different psychiatrists agreed that the suspect was suffering from a serious mental health condition. Number 7. Kai Nazir Weeks after his sentence was reduced on September the 18th of 2018, Kai Nazir posted pictures and videos to his Instagram account which showed him smiling while behind bars. 
in Peterborough Prison in Cambridgeshire, England. The 21-year-old had attacked two men after losing a game of pool at a Halloween party the previous month. After the party, which was being held at a pub in Camborne, one of the victims died from the 12 stab wounds he suffered at the hands of Nazir. On September the 10th of 2018, Nazir was sentenced to life with a minimum of 26 years, along with a concurrent 15-year term for attempted murder and two years for possession of a bladed article. His sentence was reduced to a minimum of 23 years after he successfully appealed his conviction. An informant notified the local press of the convict's smiling social media post captioned jailhouse living. In another post, Nazir and two other inmates were shown inside a jail cell. The account was deleted when the news website Cambridgeshire Live released an article about the videos. The inmate went back to Cambridge Crown Court on August 1st of 2019 and admitted to unlawfully possessing a phone in prison. Judge David Farrell said that Nazir showed a complete disregard for prison policies and displayed a lack of remorse for the deadly crime he'd committed. Farrell added that the prisoner's parole eligibility would be in question if he exhibited similar behavior moving forward. An extra six months were ultimately added to his sentence. Number six, LaForest Duron Gray Jr. On the night of February the 13th of 2019, 23-year-old LaForest Duron Gray Jr. beat his wife after she asked for help from someone who drove by their apartment in Windermere, Florida. A witness dialed 911 after seeing the suspect who also went by the rap moniker Big LA forcefully dragging his partner, 23-year-old Rachel Charlene Oxford. When police arrived at the scene at 11353 Citrus Circle, the couple were arguing in the garage. Gray was instructed by a deputy to show his hands, but he ignored the command. He subsequently began streaming live on Instagram, yelling at Oxford to tell law enforcement that the witness report wasn't true. The officers then pulled the woman out of the garage after Gray allegedly pulled out a gun and fired a shot. The man was eventually detained using a canine after he continued to resist the officers. He was treated for injuries at Orlando Regional Medical Center before being booked at the Orange County Jail on charges of domestic battery, burglary with assault, resisting arrest with violence, and four counts of attempted first-degree murder with a firearm on a law enforcement officer. According to the local sheriff, the suspect's revolver was recovered from the scene. It had two live cartridges and three spent cartridge casings. Despite being attacked by Gray, Oxford was reportedly uncooperative and denied that anything violent had occurred following her husband's arrest. According to a Daily Mail post on May the 1st, Gray petitioned for the dismissal of charges against him through a letter in which he wrote that he and his wife, who went by the stage name Christina Rebecca Rossi, posted adult content online. He claimed that they had simply been role-playing on the night of the shooting. Gray further described he and his wife as having a low celebrity status and image. His appeal was denied after a judge stated that he wasn't authorized to file motions because he had an attorney. According to the Florida Department of Corrections online system, he was ultimately sentenced to life in prison. Number five, Marcel Johnson. While returning home from tryouts on December the 3rd of 2022, a football coach was driving on the north side of Jacksonville, Florida, with four teenage passengers when another car pulled up alongside them and opened fire. Two of the teens as well as the coach were wounded in the shooting. One of the youths, identified as Prince Holland, died at the scene of the incident on Moncrief Road. Multiple law enforcement agencies worked together in the effort to identify those responsible. Two days later, 22-year-old Marcel Johnson went live on Instagram with a semi-automatic handgun in his grasp. He allegedly spoke about a man who was fighting for his life because of him, while one of his viewers commented, innocents get no points. Authorities believe that it was a reference to Holland's death. In an unrelated incident on December the 15th, Johnson was charged with marijuana possession and resisting police, but he denied being involved in the earlier shooting. His phone number and provider were uncovered by detectives before a search for call records and geolocation was granted. The resulting data showed that the suspect had in fact been in the area before and after the murder. In January of 2023, the local sheriff announced that Johnson had been arrested in connection with the shooting. He was charged with four counts of attempted murder, one count of second degree murder, and shooting deadly missiles. A second arrest was announced in February of the same year. 25-year-old Kentrivius Tyree Garrard 
had been taken into custody on identical charges as Johnson, Garrard was accused of firing the bullet that killed Holland, while investigators believed that Johnson had served as the driver. As of the latest updates, authorities were looking into the possibility that the incident stemmed from a gang-related conflict. Number 4. Khadijah Michelle Brown at a Mississippi home on March the 25th of 2023, 28-year-old Khadijah Michelle Brown live-streamed the moment she killed her husband. As the stream began, Brown and her mother were discussing how the former's 28-year-old husband, Jeremy, wasn't around to help with the kids. Jeremy then walked in the door and appeared to be talking on the phone, but Khadijah continually tried to get his attention. She eventually attempted to grab his phone, at which point he said, Don't touch me, I'll call the police. Jeremy was then approached by his mother-in-law, who told him he was supposed to be helping with the family and house. The stream turned black after the phone was knocked to the floor during the couple's ensuing struggle. Moments later, a bang was heard, followed by the wife screaming that she didn't want to go to jail. She cried out, claiming she didn't know a bullet was in the chamber and said, I'm sorry, baby, shortly before 8 a.m. When Lowndes County deputies arrived at the home on Green Tree Drive, Jeremy was pronounced dead. His death was caused by a single gunshot wound from a 9mm handgun recovered from the scene. Brown was taken into custody without incident and booked into the county's adult detention center. Number 3. Hector Fonseca before boarding a flight to Guatemala on August the 3rd of 2019, Hector Fonseca allegedly made a threat to blow up the airliner on Snapchat. The 17-year-old from Humble, Texas, was slated to depart from George Bush Intercontinental Airport on a United Airlines flight. Before doing so, however, he posted two photos with a smiley face and bomb emojis. The first post was a photo of his shoes captioned with a profane vow to blow up the plane. The second Snapchat post showed him holding his passport with the caption, time to blow up the plane. The following day, the FBI National Threat Operations Center was notified of the threat by Snapchat officials. But by that time, Fonseca had already left the airport. Investigators traced the coordinates of the posts and were directed to the suspect's address. It was there that they confirmed through the suspect's neighbor that the posts were indeed published by Fonseca. The FBI and Border Protection agents released information and screenshots of the posts to Houston police. When Fonseca returned to the States on August the 10th, he was arrested and charged with a third-degree felony of making a threat. He was held on a $10,000 bond facing a maximum of 10 years behind bars. Updates indicated that it was unclear if the teenager's threats had any credibility to them. A Harris County magistrate questioned the prosecutors about whether they'd searched the defendant's home for materials used to make bombs. According to charging documents, the airport would have shut down if the FBI had been made aware of the threat before Fonseca left the country. Today's topic was requested by horror fan. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comment section below. Number 2. Alicia Nicole Olivides Abdaez Medellin and Daniela Vasquez. In April of 2018, three teen girls in Laredo, Texas were arrested for spreading a video of two people being intimate with one another. Two months prior, on February the 27th, the girl who appeared in the video told authorities that she and her 22-year-old ex, Jesus Alberto de Leon Jr., made the racy tape a few years ago. Her ex-boyfriend reportedly shared the recording with 19-year-old Abdais Medain, 17-year-old Alicia Nicole Olavides, and Daniela Vasquez, aged 18. The three girls then leaked the video on social media without consent, and it later went viral. Medain was allegedly instructed to send the clip to the mother of the victim by Olavides. The two were arrested on April the 11th of 2018 and released on bond the same day. Vasquez was arrested the next day and also posted bond. All three were facing charges of unlawful disclosure or promotion of intimate material. Olavides was additionally charged with the sale, distribution or display of harmful material to a minor after she shared the video with a 16-year-old. Days later, the minor who received the recording from Olavides was detained as well. The victim's ex, De Leon, was also arrested and charged with publishing intimate visual material. We have a few more cases lined up for you from a previous video. Stay tuned if you'd like to check those out as well still. Number 1. Renita Williams 
Dozens of police officers rushed to a home in Shreveport, Louisiana, in response to a shooting that was streamed live on Facebook in April of 2018. 27-year-old Renita Williams had been streaming an apology to her former partner's new girlfriend when her ex-boyfriend, 37-year-old Jonathan Robinson, kicked down her front door and shot her with a rifle. When law enforcement arrived, an 80-minute standoff occurred before Robinson finally surrendered and was arrested. Williams died at the scene and a police officer was wounded. The shooter was taken to the local jail and charged with second-degree murder and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Investigators found out that the attack was premeditated based on the suspect's confession. The second degree murder charge was then amended to murder in the first degree. On January the 24th of 2019, Robinson pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Subsequently, the convicted man requested to speak with the victim's mother to apologize. He acknowledged that he'd hurt a lot of people and sought reconciliation with Williams' mother saying, I hope one day you forgive me. The mother responded that he was already forgiven, but she couldn't forget what he'd done. Number 8. Keenan Harpole 19-year-old music student Amara Maluk was shot near the campus of Portland State University in April of 2022. The woman was found at roughly the halfway point between her workplace and student accommodations in the early hours of April the 4th. She later succumbed to her injuries in a local hospital. At some point during her freshman year, Maluk had met Keenan Harpole, a running back on PSU's football team who lived on the same floor at the University Point student apartments. Harpal, who was reported as Marluk's first boyfriend by her mother, was described as abusive and manipulative in the relationship. He had allegedly struck Marluk during an argument earlier in 2022, but she didn't report him to the police and ultimately decided to grant him a second chance. She'd done so against the wishes of her friends and family, who'd reportedly seen warning signs and wanted her to end the relationship. 20-year-old Harpole was arrested on property owned by his family outside of Bend and charged with second-degree murder as well as unlawful use of a weapon. Maluk's killing was described as a domestic violence incident, but a clear motive wasn't released in the immediate aftermath. As per the latest updates on the case, Harpole had pleaded not guilty to the charges levied against him. Number 7. Marvin Ward and Alexis Morris during his first year at the School of Oriental and African Studies University, 18-year-old Hussein Chowdhury started a part-time business selling designer coats and jackets, which he advertised on social media. On March the 17th of 2021, a meeting was arranged in East London with two teenagers who'd expressed interest in his products. Marvin Ward and Alexis Morris, both aged 18, walked with Chowdhury back to his home in Walthamstow after claiming that they wanted to try on different sizes. Once they were at the address, the duo brandished bladed weapons, including a machete threatening Chowdhury as they began ransacking the home looking for coats to steal. The student's mother and older brothers, who were home at the time, reacted to the commotion. Morris was overpowered in an upstairs bedroom but eventually managed to escape out of a window. Before doing so, however, he dropped his phone inside the house. It would later be found to contain video footage of him and Ward playing with the machete leading up to the robbery. Ward also fled the house after stealing a Tommy Hilfiger jacket and got into the back of an Uber he and his accomplice had previously ordered, but the driver refused to drive off. One of Chowdhury's brothers followed him, smashed the vehicle's window and managed to retrieve the jacket. In the meantime, the teenage student's mother also came out of the house. Ward emerged from the vehicle and began swinging his knife. Chowdhury's mother sustained a slash to her hand, which resulted in severed tendons in her fingers, while the brother was also cut in the hand after attempting to grab the blade. Before fleeing the scene, Ward plunged a knife deep into Chowdhury's neck. Paramedics arrived at the address and performed emergency surgery on him in the street. The blade had entered over four inches into the teen's chest cavity, collapsing his lung. He died in front of his mother on the pavement outside his house. Ward and Morris were later arrested and ultimately jailed for 20 years each after they were convicted of manslaughter, robbery, and assault. Number 6. Corey Anderson 18-year-old Floridian Corey Anderson was arrested in late May of 2022 after Tampa police received reports that he'd threatened a school shooting on social media. As reported by the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, Anderson had made a post that showed him with a rifle, handgun, and a tactical-style vest. He captioned it, Hey Siri, directions to the nearest school. He was subsequently arrested and charged with making a written or electronic threat to conduct a mass shooting. 
In a statement released to the media, Sheriff Chad Cronister highlighted the seriousness of the man's actions, describing the post as a sick joke which had instilled fear into his community. The arrest came just days after a school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, carried out by 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, which had resulted in the death of 22 people, including the perpetrator. Number 5. Patrick Sharp On May the 27th of 2022, English teenager Kejitan Migdal was returning home after attending his high school year 13 prom. 18-year-old Migdal was walking to his car through Cutty's Lane in the town of Stevenage when he encountered Patrick Sharp, also aged 18. They got into a physical altercation reportedly sparked by Sharp's attempt to rob Migdal of his car keys. The latter was knifed and later found in Cutty's Lane in critical condition. He was taken to Lister Hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries in the early hours of the following day. Aside from doing well academically, Migdal was part of the dance troupe Prospects Fraternity, who'd made an impression on the BBC's the Greatest Dancer in 2019. Sharp was arrested a short time after the killing and charged with the murder, possession of an offensive weapon and possession of Class A drugs. In early June, he appeared at Luton Crown Court via video link and wasn't asked to make a plea while a provisional trial date was set for late November. Number 4. Eric Rohan Justin For several months in 2020, Maryland teenager Eric Rohan Justin repeatedly messaged TikTok star Ava Majuri vying for her attention on multiple social media platforms. 18-year-old Justin had allegedly bought Majuri's phone number and pictures of her that weren't online from the underage teenager's former classmates. Majuri, based out of Naples, Florida, talked to her parents and with their permission, decided to contact Justin directly. She sold him two selfies of only her face, for which Justin sent her $300 through Venmo. He then asked for more explicit photos, at which point Majuri's father, Rob, intervened. The man reminded Justin that she was underage and told him to stop contacting her. Even though he was blocked, Justin continued sending Majuri money, totaling roughly $600, pleading with her to unblock him. When she continued ignoring his requests, he started plotting to murder her. Justin allegedly got her information from one of her classmates and traveled to Naples. On July the 10th of 2020, he barged onto the Majuri family's property and pumped a shotgun shell through the front door of their home. Looking back on the gunshot, Majuri would later recount, I felt it in my chest and I looked up and there was a hole in my door from the fragments. Rob, a retired police lieutenant, sprung out of bed and noticed a teenager on their front lawn. He chased him but tripped and fell, which gave Justin enough time to flee. After Majuri's mother had called 911, Rob grabbed his handgun and stood watch while waiting for the officer's arrival. In the meantime, however, Justin returned. Rob pointed his weapon at the 18-year-old and ordered him to drop the shotgun, which he reportedly refused to do. Instead, aiming it at him, Rob then opened fire, killing Justin, who was later found to be in possession of two cell phones, both of which contained thousands of pictures of Majuri. Rob wasn't charged in connection to the shooting, as it was deemed his actions had been in line with Florida's Stand Your Ground law. Number 3. Joshua Vining Florida police officers were called to a home in Bellevue, about 70 miles northeast of Orlando, in April of 2022. Law enforcement found that Christopher Leroy Broad Jr., who was in his late teens, had sustained a critical gunshot wound. He was rushed to a local hospital where he later passed away, and investigators learned that the incident had been the result of a dangerous game involving a handgun and a bulletproof vest. Teenagers Colton Whitler and Joshua Vining were arrested in connection to the shooting, as reported by 18-year-old Evan Vowell, who took a video of the stunt that was seized by law enforcement. Vining had brought out the vest and firearm, allegedly proposing they open fire on each other. Broad shot Vining first and after the vest caught the bullet, they switched places. As reported by the police, the video showed Broad giving Vining a nod after being hit with a bullet. The latter proceeded to shoot him four more times, with some of the bullets piercing the vest. The clip contradicted Whittler's initial statements, as he'd allegedly told officers, My house just got shut up. My friend got shot in the chest. He was charged with providing false information to law enforcement, while Vining was charged with manslaughter. They were subsequently released on a $1,000 and $30,000 bond, respectively. Within weeks, however, both were arrested again in connection to a drive-by shooting that had targeted a house in Ocala. They were stopped in a Mercedes driven by 19-year-old Jarrett Vining Jr. 
along with another unnamed teenager as a passenger. All four of them were extremely nervous and sweaty, based on the reports of arresting officers. A rifle was found between the driver's legs, while an additional three pistols were recovered from the vehicle, one of which had been hidden inside a pizza box. The rounds shot at the house had been of such high velocity that they cut through it and stopped in a backyard metal structure. Fortunately, the home had been empty at the time. Number 2. Mei Ling Smith Shortly before noon, on May the 24th of 2021, Officer Nathan Jones from Indiana's Evansville Police Department was flagged down by a man in the Diamond Avenue area. He told the officer that he'd just been involved in a domestic dispute and that he wanted to leave the neighborhood before Mei Ling Smith, the woman with whom he'd been arguing, returned. While Jones and the unnamed man were speaking, 18-year-old Smith drove up in a Honda Accord and started yelling at the latter. She ignored Jones's request to remain in her vehicle and continued behaving belligerently. When the police officer attempted to place her in handcuffs, she got back in the Honda. Smith then put the vehicle in reverse and began driving away while Jones was still holding on to her. The officer was dragged for about a block before he managed to stumble free, at which point Smith ran over his arm with her car. Backup officers made their way to the scene and Jones was taken to a local hospital, but the extent of the damage to his arm remained unclear. Smith was booked into Vandenberg County Jail on charges of resisting law enforcement and battery against a public safety official. Number 1. Stephen Jones On October the 8th of 2015, multiple Northern Arizona University students were shot, one of them fatally by freshman Stephen Jones. In a parking lot near Mountain View Hall on the Flagstaff Mountain campus, Jones and two fellow pledges of the Sigma Chi fraternity were allegedly set upon by Colin Bruff, Nick Pyrie, Nick Prato, and Kyle Zaintek. The four, all aged 20 and intoxicated at the time, were reported as members of the Delta Chi fraternity. The events that followed were described through conflicting accounts from over 40 witnesses, which made it difficult to determine whether or not Jones had acted in self-defense. He and his legal team claimed that after being sucker punched, he was chased to his car where he kept a Glock 22 handgun. Fearing for his life, he then fired the weapon at Broff and Pyron as they were about to tackle him and then shot the others after being taken to the ground. The bullet trajectory indicated that Broff was within two feet of the Glock's muzzle and leaning forward as if lunging when he was shot. The prosecution would argue that Jones wasn't in further danger after the initial sucker punch and that he'd retrieved the weapon before returning to the fracas with premeditation. Broff died from his injuries. Pyring was shot in the right arm and hip while a bullet struck Preto through the neck, leaving him needing surgery for nerve damage. Zyntek was shot twice in the back and lost a kidney as a result. In addition, to suffering a punctured lung and a severely damaged liver. The jury was unable to reach a verdict during Jones's first trial and a mistrial was declared on May the 2nd of 2017. One month before the scheduled retrial on January the 9th of 2020, Jones pleaded guilty to one count of manslaughter and three counts of aggravated assault. He was sentenced to six years in prison. Thanks for watching. Would you rather live a simple life in the 70s as part of Generation X or live with the comfort of modern technology? Let us know in the comments section below.